Welcome to Client Side Data Storage. So what is this series going to be about? When you work with the web, there's kind of a typical process. And that process looks a bit like this. Your browser will ask for something. Give me pictures of kittens. The server will then send you that data back. It will send you pictures of kittens. When you want more pictures of kittens, because obviously you do, your browser will ask the server for more stuff and the server will send stuff back. At a practical level, what does this mean? Essentially, the server knows everything and the browser is kind of dumb. It asks for something and then as soon as it asks for something else, it's already forgotten what it asked for a few seconds ago. What's wrong with this? Well, browsers are a lot more powerful than they used to be. That doesn't mean they're perfect doesn't mean that they're bug free, but if you've been doing web development for a long time, you may have kind of gotten into the feeling that browsers are really, really bad. And that's just not the case anymore. They can store data and they can actually persist this data. Now, to be clear, I'm not talking about storing it forever or storing an infinite amount of data. This is not going to survive the apocalypse. It's not that persistent but they can definitely store data for a longer period of time, for a real long period of time as well. Not only that, once they have that data, they can do some really cool things with it. Obviously, you know that JavaScript can work with data and you've probably already built Ajax applications that load things and then take that data and do fun stuff with it. Well, the same thing applies to data that we store persistently. Once you have it, you can work with it, you can reorder it, resize it, etc. So what do we get? We get quicker access to data. We're not going out to the server and asking it for it because we already have it. And that means less network traffic. Now, if you have built a nice Ajax application, you're probably already getting some of the benefits of working with JSON. If you're loading just a set of JSON data and not doing a full page reload, you're doing less network traffic. Well, what's better than small packets of data over the wire? No data over the wire. If you already have the data locally, you don't have to fetch anything at all. That means less strain on your server. Your server's doing less work and your run-in is essentially handling some of the work itself. And you even get offline support. So if your browser is not able to connect to some remote resource, you can still use data that you've cached locally. Now, what are the penalties for doing this? Because it's not all sunshine and roses, right? Any type of sync that you want to do will be manual. So what do I mean by that? Let's imagine that you've actually copied some of the data from a database. In order to handle making sure that the browser has the freshest data, you have to build some type of policy in here where you create a way to know what's new on the browser versus what's new on the server or even what's been removed on the server versus what's been removed in the client. We'll look at a library later on that makes that pretty easy, but just keep in mind that that type of synchronization is something that you have to do manually. Storage limits are a bit fuzzy, and what happens when you hit those limits is also a bit fuzzy. And to be clear, this is not meant to be a replacement for a search server, like Solar, for example, or a database like SQL Server. You won't be doing super powerful things that these super powerful tools do. But if your needs aren't at that level, then what you can do on the client side may be more than good enough. Our plan. We're going to talk about a variety of different ways to store data on the client. For each of these, we'll talk about the support level so you have a really good idea of what browser support what we're talking about. We'll talk about the APIs, obviously, and show you how to work with each method of storing data. And we'll have plenty of demos. At the end, we'll look at some more generic libraries that allow you to store data at an even easier level. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.